Maya, thanks a lot for uh, spending a short more, um, a few more minutes with us here at the new school in the new building. Yes. Um, we just had a fantastic discussion about the future of learning. Uh, I am holding a sticker in my hand saying X Reality Center. Mm -hmm. Maybe just in a nutshell, what is it that you guys are doing uh, and that you consider relevant for the future of learning? Yes, so X Reality stands for the idea that we are all experimenting with um, augmented virtual and mixed reality. But the idea is that, in a sense, we're on a continuum. And the X represents that continuum. And that continuum of spatial computing that is coming to us will have an impact on the way we learn, the way we play, the way we work, uh, and do things in the future. And so at the X Reality Center, we are a hub for innovation in the space, both in terms of the curriculum and beyond the curriculum, engaging with all of our five colleges, persons, uh, our liberal arts college, the School of Performing Arts, the School of Public Engagement, as well as our founding school, the School of Social Research. And we try to think and envision that future within education, but also what our students get to do when they leave um, school. In fact, one thing that I really liked was that you, uh, that you said quite naturally that the student is in the focus and in the heart of the curriculum yes. of the school of the new innovative uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a bit? Why is the student from your perspective so, uh, at, yeah, at its core, um, the most important stakeholder? Right. Um, so we are like really absolutely thinking through emerging technologies and XR and creating new models of learning with the center of student-centered learning, focusing on the student experience. Um, and we think that as students have, you know, bring a different digital lifestyle, a different ways of thinking and approaching, interacting with things, uh, we actually are best in looking at to, you know, how, how best to engage them in terms of thinking about these new models and new pedagogical models that we then can be able to create as an emerging practice for teaching and learning. Empowering them, for example, as tools to create and test their hypothesis versus, you know, being able to share with them, uh, you know, the history of mankind or, you know, certain other contexts that is much more driven on a lecture-based model. So instead, in a fast-paced world, to stay relevant, you kind of have to be able to pick up uh, new skills and engage in different learning modes uh, all the time. And so we're looking at our students in a way to influence us in, in creating this new um, pedagogical models. And so when you uh, place it and contextualize it with what we uh, have in Germany a lot, like the, the professors that maybe come from a different right. uh, time or yeah. with a different view, if you look at the faculties, the institution, how do you manage in your work to get them on board as well? Right, so it is a work in progress, absolutely. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, the way we kind of look into that work at, at the new school, uh, we take on a very entrepreneurial approach. In many institutions, um, there is a lot of instructional support in taking initiatives off the ground. Where here, we are actually seeing ourselves as partners. So we co-develop and co-create with the faculty, but it's a very engaged process. Um, and sometimes starts in a small segment. Sometimes we may actually change and kind of like create a, a sort of mini incubation sort of sets that will take a portion of the class um, and test some, some new models before the whole sort of curriculum gets um, actually uh, revised and reimagined. Um, I think that the best advocates for uh, going forward is, of course, uh, being able to share the, the stories and uh, being, the faculty being able to share the stories, but also listening to the students' stories and, and being able to um, contextualize that and share with colleagues, being able to kind of see the multidisciplinary or where are things um, that may work across disciplines. You know, oftentimes um, in the past in education, we kind of have models that work in, in STEM or science, and then models that are more like in the humanities. And actually, the, the best part is when you bring the humanities to science or science to the humanities. And so we try, we try to really encourage that type of collaboration and cross-pollination. Sounds really like a fascinating uh, uh, 
pathway for the future. One thing that we were also touching uh, is the question, how is this uh, innovation process, mm -hmm. this collaborative mode, maybe also something on a global scale? How yeah. is is it uh, different in Europe from what happens here in the US or talk about Asia? What's your, given that you are very much active uh, also uh, recommending institutions and initiatives on, uh, in different countries, uh, what do you think is going to happen in this global learning future? Yeah, I mean I think that uh, all of us will have partners within our communities and partners beyond our communities, global partners. I do believe that um, this is, is something that is spreading across you know, not just the US but also the, globe, the world because for example just uh, in my practice and work here within the US contacts there's so many institutions in the US that are looking to partner with institutions whether it's in Europe or in Asia or in Australia and kind of like creating um, opportunities sometimes within a school sometimes within um, sort of the, con the construct of a program to test pilot these things so I, I very much think that um, we will continue to see in, in our emergence of these models. In some of these models, I will not be surprised to see industry partners, um, you know, whether there's um, from, from particular you know, parts of the world who have either a presence or are interested in developing a presence or who have um, technology that perhaps can be enabling. So um, I do believe that, that will continue, these type of partnerships will continue to drive a more global learning agenda. That said, we all bring unique things to, for the, to the table and to these contexts. And I do think that we are very, uh, still very much uh, unique in the way we approach education. Um, I think here in the US as well as in Europe, um, in China and Asia more broadly, um, uh, it is, it, it, they're different models, they're different models in terms of, um, you know, delivering education um, as well as pedagogies that um, underline the delivery models. Um, and I think um, these will continue to kind of uh, develop and evolve. I, I don't see, I don't see yet, uh, you know, clear sort of pathways other than to say, um, that active learning is something like these active learning approaches where you're making the classroom much more of a maker space than a lecture space are definitely, I think, coming globally. Maybe a little slow in some parts of the world, but they're coming. We're going to see it uh, <laughs> together and we uh, look forward to staying in touch. Allow us a final question. When you imagine we have a lot of German uh, higher ed institution leadership people mm -hmm. uh, on this trip, yes. they go home, what do you think should they do first when, if they want to start some innovative future uh, learning scenarios? Right. So I think one of the things is to create a space and identify, as I mentioned, this multidisciplinary person on your campus that somehow has a conversation with the science people and with the literature people and the design or creative arts people. And I think find that person um, and give, you know, create a space around them to um, engage in these conversations. I think for me it was very important that I did have a very much strategic support, for example, from the provost office to give myself a little bit a blank canvas to start to do. We started very small. We hope to grow. We hope that well, our work will um, continue to you know, make the case for us to grow. But I think the first thing is you know, get that person, create a space, um, give them the opportunity to test pilot something, and don't be afraid to fail. Right on. Thank you very much. Looking forward to staying in touch. Thank you.